Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Discovery Series. My name is Julian Flack and today I will discuss tribal art, of course, but with a twist. Today, comics, superheroes and pop culture are also on the menu. The topic of this video today is a very unusual type of war shield from Papua New Guinea. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the Phantom. Whenever I show this uh, shield to collectors of friends here, they are all puzzled. How come there is a superhero painted on a Papuan shield? A little bit of geography and history first. The island of New Guinea, to the north of Australia and the Pacific, is the second largest island in the world. It is home to jungles and mangrove swamps, countless rivers and mountains. It is also a unique melting pot of peoples, cultures and languages, with nearly 1200 idioms documented. The highlands are a chain of mountain ranges and valleys in northeastern New Guinea. One particular valley, the Wagi, is among the largest and most fertile lands on the island. It was first populated by humans around 30 or 40,000 years ago, but it is so isolated that it remained virtually unknown to outsiders until the 20th century. This all changed in the 1930s when gold was discovered in New Guinea and prospectors from Australia ventured into the highlands. At the time of this first contact, warfare was still widespread in the area. Warfare played an essential part in the complex system of exchanges and compensations linking all human groups of the area. Each warrior carried a shield along with spears, bows and arrows, as well as knives or stone axes. The shield was the most important element of the warrior's equipment. It was imbued with a spiritual power and considered to be an extension of the warrior himself. It possessed the life force in direct connection with the ancestors. When warfare was expected, fighters repainted their shields to ensure that the colors shone brilliantly against the sun to dazzle and threaten the opposing side. By the late 1970s and into the 1980s, after about a quarter of a century of relative peace in the highlands, local conflicts emerged again, and soon Battle Shield reappeared. The Wagi people started reviving and repainting their old Battle Shields with new motives. That is when the Phantom came into play. Why is that? Well, you see, the Phantom had many advantages over other superheroes in the eyes of Papua New Guinea warriors. First of all, in the comics, the Phantom is said to come from a long line of warriors. His nickname is the Ghost Who Walks, or the Man Who Cannot Die. He's basically invincible, carries several guns, he also wears a belt or rings with images of the skull of his ancestor. And his hideout is called the Skull Cave. All his notions had deep resonance with Highlander's beliefs. The Phantom was first published in the US in 1936 and possibly introduced in New Guinea as early as the 1940s by American soldiers fighting in the Pacific. In the 1970s, local newspapers and magazines started publishing comic strips featuring the Phantom in Tok Pisin, the official language of Papua New Guinea. It was an immediate success and thousands of readers rushed out every week to buy the magazine 
and discover the Phantom's latest adventure. The Phantom soon became a cult hero and his image was everywhere in New Guinea and notably in the Highlands. By incorporating the image of the Phantom on their shields, warriors hoped to capture some of its symbolic power and incite fears amongst their opponents. The Phantom was seen as a projective and inspiring figure for warriors of the Wagi Valley, and maybe for warriors of elsewhere as well. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this new video in the Discovery series, and I'll see you again very soon for another episode. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and stay tuned. This was Julian Flack Live from home. Thanks for watching.